Hi, this is Ben Markar with the Colorado Mountain School. I will just take a second here and look at what I might bring with for a day of ski mountaineering. So I have my backpack packed here, uh, just like I would show up at the trailhead and we can look through some of the features that I like and the equipment I'm gonna be bringing with. So first things first, talking about the backpack itself. I think for me, things that are important uh, is that it's a big enough volume. Uh, I think that's really key. We wanna make sure we actually can fit everything in our bag. With this is a 45 liter bag. I can strap the straps down, cinch them tight, uh, and really pack that bag down into a smaller bag. Uh, and that's gonna be a lot easier to do than take a 25 liter bag and turn it into a 45 liter bag. So I like having that extra space, even if I'm not always using it. The key thing though with a bigger bag is you just need to make sure you have good strapping systems. So you can really strap down all the stuff inside the bag and turn that bag into a nice, compact, tight uh, unit. Right. If we're not able to do that, and there's a lot of space floating around in there, it's going to be really ineffective to carry skis uh, and have that bag sit on us effectively and move with us effectively. So bigger bag, but make sure it has the straps to actually strap it down around what's inside of it and really kind of seal it into a nice uniform shape. Uh, other than that, I think having the ability to do a good ski carry is important. So this backpack, for instance, actually has the ability to do an A-frame carry on the sides or a diagonal carry. I think that's kind of a nice feature. Uh, the A-frame's nice because the skis are going to be closer to your back, closer to your center of gravity and applying less leverage on you when you're climbing. It takes a little bit more to rig that uh, system. Uh, so I kind of enjoy having that ability in a longer couloir where I'm going to be booting for quite a while, where if I was doing like a short section of technical climbing, having the diagonal carry could kind of be nice. The other thing with the diagonal carry is having the ability to have only one ski point sticking out the bottom of your backpack to kind of get caught on things can be kind of nice in technical climbing as well, where if you have two, it's really easy. If you sit down to your left or to your right, you're gonna have your skis kind of sticking down in the snow, getting in your way. So having the ability to do both is kind of a nice feature as well. Other things I'm looking for, uh, these helmet pouches, really awesome feature. I'm usually gonna be bringing a helmet with for the day of ski mountaineering, but that being said, most of the day is still gonna be taken up by skinning up to our objective and then having a nice place to stow my helmet during that skin up to our objective really really nice feature and then be able to put it away effectively i definitely have room to kind of fit it into my backpack as well uh, it's nice just to have it on the outside because this doesn't pack that well into my backpack and it's going to take up a lot of space and just be another thing i need to deal with as we're taking breaks and things are coming in on my backpack so super awesome feature All right so this helmet pouch can come off we can stow it away in here really easily it's entirely integrated into the backpack uh, I've been rolling with the Camp Storm helmet. I think this is really awesome. It works well as a climbing helmet, ski helmet. It's really designed to do it all. Uh, it has side protection as well as top protection on uh, super lightweight. So this has usually been my go-to. I use this skiing, climbing, just about everything. Uh, the other thing you'll notice kind of on the outside of my bag here, I have my pair of ski crampons just dangling on the outside. In the spring, we're dealing with a lot of frozen conditions, right? Uh, as the sun gets hotter, it's melting the snow, and once it freezes again, it's gonna be almost ice in a lot of cases. And usually when we're approaching a spring objective, we wanna be getting there early in the day before it starts melting and avalanche danger increases. So we're usually gonna be using our ski crampons right off the bat. So having them ready when we're starting out in the morning, it's dark and cold, everything's frozen, uh, kind of a nice trick. Doesn't always happen this way. Sometimes I might just have them in my bag until we need them. And then once we're in and out of them a fair bit, this is where they just get stowed. I just don't wanna be throwing these sharp things into my bag all the time uh, for fear of damaging them. I think. Just considering the ski crampons for a minute is uh, really valuable. I think uh, when we're skinning, a lot of times we don't think too much about falling hazard because we're usually skinning in soft snow, the flop and stop conditions, so to speak. But when we start dealing with skinning on firm conditions, we can very quickly get ourselves into dangerous situations, right? So our skis, when we're skiing, are our primary self-arrest tool. And when we're skinning, we don't have ski edges available to us with our skins on. Uh, so if we do it up on like a 25 degree slope, for instance, we can very quickly get into a hazardous situation where we're in a place where there's a falling and sliding hazard, but there's not actually a good self-arrest tool available to us. So I did getting these on early uh, before you think you need them is pretty good uh, if we're going to be getting into a situation where security is jeopardized. One place I know this is a real problem is like in Washington State, for instance, where we have these big frozen volcanoes people are skiing on, uh, and people can definitely take a fall on what seems to be like a blue square kind of ski run and fall and slide for 2,000 feet into a crevasse, right? So really just think about what's the falling hazard, how we can use these crampons to mitigate that falling hazard for a little bit. Uh, other quick thing on these in terms of philosophy of ski crampons, 
They're kind of obnoxious in terms of efficiency. You can't glide, you have to kind of step higher because they'll be dragging in the snow. Uh, and so if we're on a flat, they really suck. But as soon as we start going uphill, you won't really notice the inefficiency. So that's usually kind of the place I'm looking for them is when we have long sustained uphills. That's when it's nice to get them out and use them. If it's just a short section, I might even consider just booting up it and then going back to skinning instead of having to like get in and out of these because we'll just lose a lot of efficiency on the flat. So use them for the ups, not for the flat. Okay, looking inside the backpack, what do we got here? So one thing that I find myself doing a fair bit, and everyone's got their own style with this stuff, uh, I'll actually have a lid of another backpack to kind of carry my personal effects with. So when I'm taking a break, for instance, I can just pull this out, have my snacks, have my water, have everything handy right here, and not need to be digging around in my bag for like all the bits and pieces, right? So we have in here, Goggles, goggles super valuable. I think uh, if the weather's nice, I actually find myself not using these that often. But when the weather's poor, I think it's really good to have them. I think it's just, for me, it's just another step and I have some, some jewelable sunglasses that actually transition with a different light. And so those usually like work for me pretty much on the ups, the downs, almost all light conditions. But when we do have blowing snow flat light, I'll have a pair of goggles with low light lenses. Being able to see is really essential to perceive the subtleties of the snow. Uh, if you can't do that, you're really missing out on important information. So, usually come with, don't always get used. Uh, snacks, all right. I'll bring a number of buffs with as well. I think uh, the sun is so hot up here in Colorado, come spring and summer and the snow is so bright. The reflection and the sun together off the snow, it's like, it's too bright for even sunscreen to cut it a lot of times. So I find myself using a buff frequently to keep the sun off. Uh, warm hat, super nice depending on the conditions, may not always come with in the winter always though, but having that comfort, that warmth, uh, taking care of yourselves out there and keeping your mental bandwidth, super important. So a little bit of the luxury items, not a bad idea a lot of the time. Uh, other things I really enjoy, I'll usually be carrying with a soft bladder water ball, depending on the objective, in addition to a thermos, right? So the thermos always comes with, uh, this is a three quarter liter thermos. Obviously, it's a little heavier than a normal water bottle because it's got double layers of metal in there for insulation. Uh, but what I can do with this is fill the lid with snow and melt that snow with the hot tea. So I usually can, if I do all of that, if I just melt all of the snow, uh, I usually can get a liter of water out of here. And it doesn't actually weigh that much more than maybe just carrying a liter of water in an algae. Right, so I have that option. But I also have some hot beverage that's a very valuable emergency response tool and just really nice if it's chilly out. Then I might consider also bringing a soft bladder with some extra water, where I might save this for once we're up into the Alpine. And this will just be like to get some water on the uphill skin track. And once I'm done with it, a lot of times I'll just, like we're up to the top of our run, I'll just dump the rest out and put this thing away and it disappears in the size of a golf ball. So I'm not carrying around this big empty water bottle all the time. So I really dig this combination as well. Other things, ski straps, really useful for everything. Definitely have a few, uh, for securing your skis for your various kinds of backpack attachments. Uh, really helpful for hooking them to your backpack effectively. Headlamp, satellite communication device, uh, Kleinometer, and the personal knickknacks. Uh, other things, and another more accessible pouch, I'll usually carry with uh, a multi-tool. Uh, for just working on anything that needs to be scraped, prodded, poked, uh, I usually find just having this handy can be really nice. I'll carry another repair kit as well, but I like to be able to have this handy, not need to dig into the bottom of my backpack to get it. And then I'll usually carry with some skin wax as well. One thing we'll find in the spring is as we walk through the hot, melted, wet snow, our skins are going to accumulate some moisture. And when we take those warm, wet skins and skin into the shade on dry snow, all that dry snow is gonna to freeze to the bottom of the skin and it's gonna glob up and become really inefficient. So rubbing it down with some skin wax can be really nice. Uh, can be a deal breaker on some days even. Uh, okay, what else we got in here? So repair tools, these usually come with. Uh, always write your skis or your kind of like your feet in the, uh, in the winter backcountry. And so we wanna make sure those are working effectively. Uh, if there's an issue, we can really be out of luck. We can talk about like four, five, six, seven hours to get back to a trailhead that should take an hour for post holing, right? Uh, okay, moving into more technical gear. Things like crampons uh, and then uh, ice axes, right? And so for me, 
crampons, get the aluminum ones, get the lightweight ones. We're climbing on snow. We're not using them that often, right? They're gonna spend most of their time in, their, in your backpack while you're skinning. So uh, that's, that's what we wanna kind of prioritize. How are they gonna be helping us out when they're just sitting in our backpack not doing anything? And that's lightweight, aluminum, compactable, right? And so I wanna be able to bring them with when I need them, but I also am gonna spend most of the day not actually needing them. So something like the Camp Nanotech, uh, is a really awesome, fully automatic, straps on the ski boot, uh, super light, only what you need uh, for that snow climbing, right? And it's actually light enough weight that I bring it with. If I'm bringing, like if I had to bring with full steel, like ice climbing crampons, I probably would just neglect to bring them because they're so heavy. In this case, I actually bring them with all the time. Same kind of philosophy with ice tools. Uh, I'll, I definitely like something like the Camp Nanotech or uh, the Camp Corsa Ice Axe. Uh, it's another aluminum ice axe. It's not really rated as a technical climbing axe. It's just what you need as a self-arrest tool uh, for any steeper snow climbing. And I usually like to go as short as possible because I want to be able to stow it actually inside my backpack in the rescue gear pocket, right? So something at, like in the like 45 centimeter range, right? A lot of times when we're doing a lot of mountaineering, we might consider a longer ice axe because we're going to be walking with it as a balance point. Usually what I find when I'm skiing is I'm going to have a ski pole in one hand, ice axe in the other if I'm booting up steeper terrain. And so I can balance on my ski pole and just have my ice axe available for a rest, right? And, and that's where that kind of works for me because I'm prioritizing smaller, lighter, because 90% of the time we're not using it, just sitting in our backpack, right? Other things as far as some of those hard tools go, obviously like a shovel and a probe. But one thing I, one kind of style of shovel I like in a more of a mountaineer, mountaineering context is a shovel that has the shaft integrated into the blade, right? So you notice I can pull this out in one motion and have my shovel assembled and ready to go. Just one less step for transitioning from like a steep boot to instant, for instance, into the descent, right? So I need to like be booting up a steep exposed slope and I wanna create a bench to stand on and be secure on for our transition. This allows me just to quickly and easily deploy the shovel uh, to effectively be able to do that. If I was doing a lot more snow study in the winter, for instance, I might consider bringing with a beefier shovel that's more effective as a digging tool uh, as opposed to like an easily deployable lightweight option. Uh, probes in there as well. Uh, and then we can work to the bottom of my bag and that's where we're looking at it more like the emergency response gear that I'm usually bringing with at all times, right? And so for me, my style with the emergency response tools, it's kind of three things. Uh, in addition to the standard first aid kit, I'm usually bringing with a pair of these down pants. These are usually the first thing that go into my, bands, into my bag. These are a pair of like the synthetic pants Rab makes. Uh, and these kind of will pack out the bottom of my bag and uh, fill that space really effectively. It's also kind of what I'm gonna sit on when I'm taking a break in the winter, right? I wanna sit on my backpack and I know I have some soft, durable stuff in the bottom. That's partly this and I can be sitting on that to take a break. Uh, the idea behind the pants is that I have my, my warm jackets right there always coming with me. And if I put that jacket on and I'm able to walk around and generate some heat, I'm usually gonna stay fairly comfortable. But as soon as I'm injured, I can't walk around, I can't keep my legs warm. Putting a patient into the down pants is, with their down jackets is gonna be a really effective system for keeping them warm, right? That's gonna really help insulate them from the air, the jacket and the pants. Uh, and then we have a small lightweight inflatable pad, right? This is the smallest, lightest pad that Thermarest makes. And so now we have the ability to insulate them from the, from the snow as well. So now they're starting to get more comfortable. And now I'll also usually bring with one of these double bivy sacks wrap makes, these emergency bivvies. Uh, getting them to this will then will really kind of help seal them that heat and be able to keep them warm when they can't move. Uh, this is a double size, so I could actually put two people in there and then we start sharing our heat around and that really helps us warm up a lot. The other thing I might consider in terms of my first emergency response gear, uh, in my first aid kit, I'm usually gonna add in some, some hand and foot warmers, right? And so with this system, we're able to keep the core really warm. It's really nice to make sure we can keep the feet warm as well. So having some foot warmers, we can put into those boots. And now we're actually able to keep someone stable and warm throughout the night uh, in an emergency response situation. Uh, so this is kind of what I'm bringing with usually in my backpack. Uh, you can see a lot of this gear in that original blog post and a lot more descriptions about it. Uh, and we'll look at some more videos here in a minute about kind of ski gear, boots, clothing and glove equipment I might bring with for ski mountaineering as well. So look forward to that.